Hi guys, let me try something very different today. I want to present a showcase of something that happens when you deal with Muslim apologists. Now, it, it's not that we try and seek out the low-hanging fruit, but this is just somebody where I happened to notice one of his comments, one of his tweets on Twitter, and I went to see, well, who is this and, and what does he do? And, and because he calls himself, he seems to be, his name seems to be called Fahim uh, Khan or something. And he calls himself a sheikh. So I thought, oh, brilliant. So this is not low hanging fruit. This is somebody, you know, substantial. And I can go and maybe interact with him and learn something about Islam. So I looked at his Twitter profile and he was advertising his Facebook profile and his uh, his web page that he is hosting. So I, I went to the um, Facebook profile and I found Sheikh, Sheikh Fahim, who is a scholar, public speaker, an author, orator, radio, TV presenter, co-founder of the Sunni I thought, oh, fantastic, at last somebody who can, you know, provide some insight into the current earthquake that we are experiencing in Islam. And then I looked and I saw, okay, he's the radio presenter. Well, that's not a big deal. Um, Co-founder of something, well, I can call myself the general director and president of Stop Spamming Enterprises. That doesn't say anything. But then uh, former teacher, former teacher, former teacher. And, um, okay, but he studied, studied at Harvard X. I thought, oh, wow. So we have somebody who's educated, who, who also knows Islam, and who can provide some, some input here. So I thought, oh, brilliant. So I left a message and I thought, I did, this can't be true because this was so primitive. This was like, you know, a, 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 child, a silly child in a silly hat because he wears a really silly hat. And I, th I thought, how is that possible? How is it possible that somebody with an education from Harvard, with, with um, you know, all this, this knowledge about Islam and all that, why does he come back with this, this nonsense? Did the universe create itself? Was it self-creating, something creating This is like the most primitive attempt at getting at a non-believer that is possible. This is really primitive. This is lowest rung. This, I, I couldn't believe this. And this is why I said, why don't you ask a cosmogonist? Not, not some guy on Facebook. Or ask your God or someone who knows, not me. And I said to him, I'm criticizing your arrogant and flippant dismissal of intellectual standards. And all you do is quote in our book. So that, that doesn't, it didn't add up. So I went and said, okay, well, if you studied at Harvard X, is there something wrong? So I went and looked at this. And I found this art of persuasive writing and public speaking. But it was, had nothing to do with Harvard. It was a company called EDX Inc., and the Chinese underneath it does not bode well for our intellectual giant. It is, okay, I'm not going to call it a diploma mill. I, I don't know how here they are allowed to carry the, the coat of arms of Harvard and, and why they are even allowed to carry the name or be associated with Harvard in any way. But anyway, you can see here it's EDX. So we, we know EDX is delivering this and we know EDX is a company. So if you go and you look what this is all about, okay, the duration of the course is a total of eight weeks. So he says he studied at Harvard X and in other places he says he studied at Harvard for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. The time commitment is two to three hours per week, not, not per day, but per week. So in other words, two times eight is 16. So it's 16 hours. So you can do the whole thing in two days. That, that is the, the full impact of, of what he studied at Harvard, Harvard X. And then he gets a certificate, which is a verified certificate of achievement for 16 hours of studying the art of persuasive writing and public speaking. And how do you get this verified certificate of achievement? Well, you need to pay. Because here you get a verified certificate <laughs> to highlight the knowledge. An instructor signed certificate. You just need to pay for it. Okay, I don't know. why. Save yourself the course and just get the certificate. <laughs> and if you go and look at the certificate, it's not instructor signed or anything like that. Anyway. So 
All right, then let's take a look what he really does. Now, remember, this is not somebody where I, I, I went looking for a really silly guy who has very little knowledge of the Quran, only a superficial understanding of Islam. I did not go and look for this guy. Now, suddenly I, I was on Facebook and I, I, I look at my feed. It's the weekend and I'm, I'm seeing this ad which says, well, come on, join us for a live feed. I said, oh, brilliant. Yes, I can interact with this guy finally in a more um, humane way. And because the, the way that he acted on Facebook was, was not exactly convincing. And the funny thing is, as soon as somebody else, you know, reacted to my um, comments and I interacted with them, he got all upset. Like he should have all the attention and I should, I don't know, his ego seems to have some sort of damage somewhere because he couldn't handle that I was talking to other people, that I was responding to their comments. It was quite funny. So, unite against Islamophobia. Now, he loves this. He's shit scared of, of atheists, okay? He's shit scared of people that, you know, it's easy to argue against Christians, it seems, but, but he's really, really scared of, of atheists, of those people who don't believe in anything that, that he brings up. He says social media is filled with hateful people. Now, hang on, I'm quoting the Quran. Okay, I'm, I'm quoting hadiths which Islamic scholars have graded as authentic, as the Sahih. So how can that be hate? How can I be hateful for quoting the Quran? That, so what he is saying is the contents of the Quran is full of hate because that is all I'm quoting. So, you know, he needs to be a little bit careful here. So he says, we are people who unite. Now, I'm not united. I'm single-handedly doing this. There's, there's nobody else here but me, and I'm the only one doing this. To quell any positive dawah of Islam. No, if there is something positive, I will point this out. Because after all, I'm the one who is capable of changing my mind. He is not. He is a bigot. I'm not. I can change things, and I am able to point out something positive. And if there is something positive, I do. But the dawah that he is bringing uh, is, is not positive. This is the funny thing. I wish Muslims would concentrate on Islam, on the positive things in Islam, that they would just simply erase all the negative things and go and, and you know, somehow merge with the 21st century and bring positive dawah. Then we wouldn't be having this discussion. So he says, join tonight's live broadcast and find out how to deal uh, no, this must be the persuasive writing at work here. Find out how that the how is missing. Yeah, with him, then generally it's always the why, 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 but never the how. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was a cheap joke. So it, it's it's just missing. Find out how to deal. So th this is he, his intention is to really show that you can deal with Islamophobia. Part of creative or persuasive writing does not seem to be to first define the terms that you are discussing because he doesn't define Islamophobia. He thinks this is a term that everybody knows. What well, it is, well, I don't. I have no idea what this is because it doesn't go together. It doesn't make sense to be um, afraid or have an irrational fear or, or whatever of Islam. My fear is real. I am really afraid of Islam, of Sharia. I don't want to live under Sharia. I think it's terrible. And that is not a phobia. That is very, very real. I was nearly killed by Muslims. So this is not a phobia. This was very real. So anyway, I'm not a hater. I'm not united. And I don't instigate hateful rhetoric. So this is his, his way of justifying his fear. His real fear. He's really afraid of atheists. And this is his way of dealing with it, it seems, where he says, well, they are the ones who are the haters. They are the bad people. They are terrible. They don't have any moral, I don't know, grounding or something like this. And they are the terrible people. So he says, let us come together and try and understand the reality of the situation. Well, great. Find out how we as individuals can bring about positive change. Brilliant. To silence the attacks. Oh, dear. No. You see, this is, he doesn't have any arguments. He doesn't have any points. He can't do anything. There's nothing that he can bring forward. He is intellectually incapable of addressing the, the, the kind of grievances that we have with Islam. So, so all he wants to do, instead of now finding a, a solution, instead he becomes even more of a problem and says, well, I need to silence them. Thinking that 
if I shut up, the problem will go away. No, you still have the same problem. It's just you don't hear about it. But it's still there. So silencing me as a critic who provides constructive criticism does not help you in any way. It's just running away. And running away is brilliant. That's all you can do. Because he challenged me to a debate. So I said, great, let's have a debate. Yes, I challenge you to a debate, which is this and this. And he said, oh, sure, yeah. Where, when, how? And I said, okay, how about Saturday? Um, we, we do this in a, on, a, on, a, a, you know, on a neutral platform. And then when I said yes, he said, oh, and he's South African, so you will understand this. Um, and he, he got scared and ran away. And all of a sudden, all it was, while running away, he was still screaming at me how bad I was and hateful and I'm the Islamophobe. I'm the <laughs> yeah, actually, when I, when I got this, all right, I put underneath and, and you could quickly jump down to the bottom where I said the silly guy with the silly hat. And, okay, this because that's what he is. He's full of hatred, void of reason. Well, he's full of hatred and he doesn't have any reasoning at all. And he's a coward. Well, I've just explained. Yeah, he is a coward because all he can do is run away. Who can't behave a Muslim who thinks he can lecture others. And this is the point. He doesn't behave the way that a good Muslim is supposed to behave. But he's, he's highly abrasive. He's, he's very arrogant and, and highly aggressive. And he thinks he can lecture others. Now, well, is he prepared to learn from me? No, he's not. I'm prepared to learn from him. If he gives me something, I will learn from him. But he will not listen to me. And he, that's why I said F for fail. And then he made a big thing. You see, when I brought this out, well, I, I happened to see this four hours later and I commented on it and nobody else commented. It says there are two comments, one share. Well, the, the, the two comments, one is mine and one is his, where he reacted to this calling me Islamophobe again. And the share is him sharing it somewhere. So there's no big deal here. But he, he is, you know, I, I, I don't know why he has this deficiency. There seems to be something wrong with his person, with his brain, that, that he has this complex that he thinks he needs to compensate or overcompensate for. So, so he wants to silence people. He doesn't want to get into a dialogue. He doesn't want to address or, or in, in, in any way discuss this. He just wants to silence other people. And then he says, join the live broadcast and um, this will be duration minimum 30 minutes disc Okay, duration is minimum 30 minutes discuss discussion followed. I don't know. I don't know how his persuasive writing works. I don't know how to s split this up. To me, it looks like this is minimum 30 minute discussion followed by Q&A. Okay, here's a screenshot by Speakers Corner UK who said, all right, let's, let's interact. I'm available to talk to you. If you want to know anything, I'm an atheist. I'm prepared to talk to you. Let's talk. He, he didn't react. He, we, you could see that he read the, the messages because he suddenly started talking about unicorns, which he hadn't done before. So he must have read what was written there. But he did not react in any positive way, indicating that he was even interested in interacting with anybody. So was there a discussion? No. Was there a Q&A? No. From viewers? No. So there was nothing. It was just him preaching. And that's it. And what he did, okay, this, this is quite funny. What he says is, So I am a Muslim a scholar. scholar. I'm inviting Muslim people about a topic that is troubling Muslims. And guess who was the first to respond? A non-Muslim Islamophobe. And you're supposed to be in awe. Anyway, looking at this Harvard thing again, and in the um, in the Facebook, uh, like like his his news feed, and in the video, he keeps on referring to his dissertation. So I thought, oh, let me take a look at it. This is great. So this Sheikh Fahim, he calls himself Sheikh. Now you don't do that. You don't you don't you know go and present yourself as, with a self given title of something. I mean, this is not academic. This is not nothing. This is like. Pastor X, you don't do that. You call yourself Fahim Khan or whatever, and that's it. But he then makes it in the third person and presents an abstract for just one or one and a half pages, word pages, of his, what he calls a dissertation. He doesn't know what a dissertation is. He has no clue. 
the, he thinks this is just any essay is called a dissertation. He doesn't, you know, he's constantly using terms he doesn't understand. He explains that students were given the choice to write any topical matter. I don't know what a topical matter is, um, but, but he writes anything that they wanted. So they could just write anything and then they get the certificate. That's great. And this Sheikh Fahim seized the opportunity to present his peers the highly propagandized matter of Islamophobia. I'm, I'm sorry, what is the matter of Islamophobia? He hasn't told us what it is. He doesn't do anything. He just says it's the matter of Islamophobia from the perspective of the double standards of Western academia in the ostracizing of the historic contributions of Muslims and the choice to bombard the populace regarding it. Come on. What has that got to do with Islamophobia? He says Islamophobia, and, and he, okay, let, let me get to this. He, he explains it a little bit, a bit, and then because in the video he then says, "Well, this is the um, the hatred of Muslims. There is, phobia is just an irrational fear of Islam." So I don't know how he gets from Islam to to Muslims, and how Islamophobia. The hatred of Muslims has anything to do with the historic contributions of Muslims. Now, the, the funny thing is, there, there are none. Now, I've done some, what Jasikari says, deep dive. <laughs> I've done some, some really heavy research into the historic contributions of Muslims. And there were none. There, there, no Muslim has ever invented or, or created or discovered anything of significance. Now, there were some really, really brilliant people a thousand years ago. They were polymaths. They... They were brilliant people, and they improved algebra. Yes, they improved, um, I don't know, optics or whatever you want to call it. Yes, they developed new pumps. They developed um, different architecture. They developed, but I have debunked, debunked. I refuted and showed what is wrong and and what would be better to go. So I've debunked the whole one thousand and one um, inventions hype. And I think this is what he's using there because he's coming up exactly with this. Muslims invented coffee. <laughs> oh, yes. well, I'm, I'm drinking tea, so it doesn't affect me. Anyway, I, I don't know where he comes into this, and I don't know where he gets all these historic contributions. He just he just copies. He just parrots stuff. He doesn't understand. He doesn't research. He doesn't do anything acad that an academic would do, and he, he just he just repeats stuff, and that's it. This is what he calls his contribution. So. Let's quickly take a look at this dissertation. So it's by Sheikh Fahim. Now, that, that's a big no-no, like I said. Then it starts with a, um, with a quote, ignorance leads to fear. Yeah, it can be. Fear leads to hate. And, uh, well, maybe. And hate leads to violence. Well, there's a possibility, but not really. The funny thing is, he is totally ignorant. And yes, he is very, very afraid. And with him, this being afraid actually leads to hatred. Because this is the only way that he can handle this. He doesn't know how to handle it in any other way. Is his fear of atheists, and therefore he hates them because he can't address them. There's nothing that he can do with them. He starts with opening quote, but there's no close quote, so I don't know what this is supposed to be. I greet you with a universal greeting. You know what this reminds me of? There's another one. Hi, my name is Kent, and I'm going to give you my PhD um, dissertation here. Also, just a page nonsense, and he gets a PhD. This is so reminiscent of, of what, what I remember from, from this guy in the States. I greet you as a greeting of peace, which is a religion of peace. Well, it, if it is a religion of peace, you don't need to greet you with peace, if everything is peace. So he's just making you know, claims and that's it. As a Muslim with fond memories growing up, oh, isn't that sweet? He's giving us some of his personal emotions. This is a, this is a dissertation. And it's not, you know, for you, how, you, how are you feeling today? Okay, he finds it bizarre that Islamophobia exists when we are at the zenith of human accomplishment. I'm sorry, what are you talking about? We are able to, to completely destroy our planet. We are completely ignoring a huge percentage of the human population. We are exploiting human beings left, right and center. We are killing people. Muslims, there is not a day without some sort of terrorist attack by a Muslim somewhere. What is the human accomplishment here? Just because we've got a, an, an iPhone. Yes, in technology, we have found great ways, but we are also you know, able to completely destroy things. I think we still have a long, long way to go. 
And this is, we've, we've just started looking at the world. We've just started experiencing what this, this universe is actually made of. Disgruntled by the incog incogitant view. Oh, sorry, this is a word that I have not come across. So maybe this is, he has a higher level of um, vocabulary than me. I sometimes wonder after what wizardry has conjured up this convenient yet acute forgettery of the historical record that has veiled the view of the intellectuals. I mean, this is mumbo jumbo. This is not. Okay, let's leave it. Islamophobia is not new. In fact, 2011 studies revealed that 52% of Americans, 48% of Canadians felt that the West does not respect Muslim societies. What does that have to do with Islamophobia? Just because nobody respects Muslim societies does not mean that they are afraid of them, that there is an irrational fear of Muslim societies because they are not respected. Respect is something personal and is earned and not demanded anyway. And then, you see, it's always somebody else's fault. The others are all wrong. They don't see Muslim right and the societies are so good and then it's the media will be held accountable someday when people of truth sit on the seat of power. Oh, goodness. You know, this is... I don't know what age group this is, but it's definitely childish. Okay. So there's a ch false philosophy that since many terrorists are Muslims, all Muslims are terrorists. No, n nobody says that. Nobody thinks so. Yes, today, most terrorists are Muslims. This is true. I mean, you can't get around that. But that doesn't mean that all Muslims are terrorists. Like all atheists are shooters just because one atheist shot some people. So that's nonsense. And this is not the reason for the fear, the phobia of 1.8 billion Muslims. Does that include the Ahmadiyya? Does it include the Shia? Does it include the Ismailis? Does it include the Sufis? Does it... There are so many groups where even mainstream Muslims say, no, they are not Muslims. And all of a sudden, when it comes to saying something about Muslims, well, we're one big ummah. But if you ask them, are they part of it? N no, they're not part of it. They're not part of it. That's crazy. So the, the fear, the phobia of, of, of the, the, the Muslims is, is not really there. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of Islam and it's real. So stop calling it Islamophobia. It's, it's silly. Could it be prevalence of an ignorant system or system of ignorance prevailing? Could it be a corollary of the systematic removal of the contributions of Islam over the ages? No, they did not happen. I, I don't know why he carries on about the past. We're talking about today. We're talking about the attitude towards Muslims today. We're talking about the attitude of Islam. I would love for Muslims to go and say, all right, we're going to just ignore all these sentences in the Quran and instead focus on what is positive for today's environment. This is, we can argue the possibilities, but I hereby remind the world of the wonders which Islam have contributed. Well, they haven't. I appeal now to your senses to further the eyes of your hearts. Okay, this is all mumbo jumbo. And, and what was it there for? Well, it's all supposed to go and, and say that even Al Haytham. He came up with the scientific method, which he didn't, and he invented the camera, well, which he didn't. I don't know. He didn't, he didn't invent glasses. This was done like 600 years later in Italy. So, no, like I said, he improved it a lot. Yes, great, but and nothing significant. Sorry. The scalpel. I'm sorry. If you go and look at the scalpel, people knew about sharp instruments for thousands of years. And the way that the scalpel, the way that it is used today in surgery, the way that that um, comes about, that that was like, I don't know, maybe three, four hundred years ago. So stop making unfounded claims. Stop lying. Stop, stop bringing out all this nonsense where, you know, just a simple, uh, I mean, a, a five minute search on, on Google looking at the sources will show you that this is wrong. Then he comes to algebra. Okay, may, maybe algebra you know, originated from the word Al-Jabr from, and it was Al-Jabr, not Al-Jabra. He doesn't even speak Arabic. From from the book that um, Al-Kharizmi wrote. It could be. But he did not develop any algorithms either. <laughs> oh, yes, this is so... I mean, he's actually so silly, he's comical. 
So the only way to free the mind from this matrix of madness is blatant devices. Oh, come on. Let us come to our senses. Okay. Dear, dear Mr. Khan, stop being an idiot. Stop lying. Stop deceiving. That's not the way. Be a good Muslim. Go and tell us and, and listen to what chapter 16, sentence number 125 tells you to do. And that is do it in the best possible way. Go and find some good arguments. Concentrate and focus on Islam. Don't come with these nonsense and these these um, stupid things that anybody can check and find that they are wrong. So just don't do it. It's useless. It does not work. And then going on Facebook and and you know spreading lies about me and saying yeah I would I did this and this and this and I'm the terrible guy here. No, I'm not. I'm just the one who challenged you and you didn't know the answer. And that is where your narcissistic um, ego somehow freaked and, and said, now I need to really attack this guy. You are the one who is doing all these things that you are accusing others of. And I wish you would stop. So this was a case study of, you know, a person I did not look for, but who just came in and it shows that there are no real arguments that Muslim apologists can bring forward. So they come up with this this funny thing with Islamophobia, trying to stop the discussion and trying to um, conjure up the images of, um, you know, we are the victims and, and, and like um, taking them to be treated like the Jews were treated by the Nazi Germans or something like that. And that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Come and bring real arguments. Come and, and sit down with us. Let's have a discussion. Let's have a dialogue. Let's see how we can work this out together. Why don't you listen to us for a change? Why don't, why don't you learn from us what we can give you? We, the, the, the non-Muslims, I'm, I'm talking not about me in, in plural, as the, you know, the, the pluralis majestatis, but I'm talking about we, the non-believers. We can teach you something. We can teach you how to live in the 21st century and take your mind out of the 7th century where you are stuck. We can show you what the benefits are of granting women equal rights, of actually condemning slavery and all the um, human rights abuses that are being committed in Islam, in the Quran and by Muslims today on this planet. Look at what is happening. Look at what is happening in Pakistan. Look at reality. Look at the people who are being killed just because they are leaving Islam, because they left Islam or because they said something about the Quran or about Muhammad or something. That's not a reason to kill. Let's talk about that. Let's sit down and, and discuss how a Muslim can behave in the 21st century, be a Muslim, but still live in the 21st century, instead of just silencing any kind of criticism because that doesn't help. Okay, guys. That's it for me. This was just a, a, a quick insight into the brain of somebody who cannot handle the 21st century and non-believers who don't believe what he believes. Thank you for your time. See you next video. Bye.